AI spending, of course, a key focus during earnings this quarter. Apple, Apple, Meta, Alphabet, all reporting a massive jump in AI spend. Total CapEx spend reaching $116 billion leads to plenty of bubble talk on the street, as you know. But our next guest says those spending levels are, in fact, sustainable. Let's bring in Goldman Sachs economist Joseph Briggs to talk about it. A widely watched report that you put out a few days ago. Welcome. Good to see you. Great to be here. So you're, you're sort of taking a long view, right, and comparing the era that we're in to... Railroads, telecom in the 90s, Europe. Can you talk a bit about it? Yeah. Um, so there's this common narrative that we hear that we're spending hundreds of billion dollars in CapEx and that this uh, spending is unprecedented. And that's certainly true if you look at things in nominal dollar terms. However, anytime you're comparing macro ag aggregates, you need to scale by GDP or some other normalizing factor. And when we do that, we see that the total amount of AI spending in the U.S. today is actually a little bit below 1%. Um, if we look back at IT spend, the build out of infrastructure then, railroads, um, you know, canals in the UK in the 1600s, uh, generally these uh, infrastructure investment impulse rose to 2 to 5 percent of GDP. And so we're not at levels that are unprecedented or even that large. Do you expect us to get there eventually? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we are seeing spending continue to grow. Um, as long as the increase in spending leads to improvement in model performance. And that certainly is the case if we look at uh, the recent trends around model size and you know, which models are performing the best. Um, then companies will have an incentive to continue to grow uh, you know, computing resources. At the same time, uh, there's going to be a lot of need for compute to support the inference that's going to be necessary to unlock the significant productivity gains that we expect over the next 10 years. Um, and so this is going to require a lot of spending. Um, I think that, you know, going back two and a half years ago, we laid out a case that an AI investment cycle could reach around 2% of GDP. Um, I think that we're on track for that. We're halfway there, essentially. Um, you know, I, I do wonder, what do you include in your sort of overall spend here? Obviously, we can look at the hyperscalers and what they're spending, but it's a lot more than that. It's those who are building data centers, what goes into them. I'm just curious, how large is the universe here in terms of that number you're using to back into 1%? Yeah, it's measuring AI spending is actually surprisingly difficult. <laughs> and we've done it three different ways. We've looked at the hyperscaler CapEx the same way that everyone else has. We've also looked at the revenue of companies that are exposed to the build out of AI. Uh, when we do that, we get something like a 300 billion annualized spend rate today. Uh, we also have looked at the national accounts, just tracking how much spending are we seeing on data centers, uh, HVAC, semiconductors, servers. And when we do that, we get something in the mid 200 billions. And so uh, all these measures are pointing to something like 250 to 300 billion in annualized spending today. Uh, naturally, that's going to increase going forward, but um, you know, it does point to that level that's a little bit less than what's well, already of GDP. increased. Actually, if you look at the spending plans of the companies that have just reported earnings in the last couple of days, that math is relatively easy. And I think it may be surging above 300 billion already. Um, when we look back at like the Internet period, which obviously, you know, we lived through, do you feel like I'm, I'm just I'm trying to understand because the numbers are so large now, but is everything that was included then sort of fair to have included at that point in terms of being a percentage of GDP? I guess I'm just asking if you're confident in your estimates. Yeah. Um, I, what I am confident in is that we're not seeing spending levels exceed what we have seen historically. Um, comparing across time is always difficult. Um, but, you know, the amount of spending that we're seeing today, I think, you know, is both below what we've seen historically. And if we're right and AI is going to lead to a 15 percent gross uplift to labor productivity following full adoption, that's going to create a lot, of, a lot of economic value. And as that economic value is realized, I think it, you know, should, uh, you know, present down discounted value terms, reach something or, or be evaluated at something like $8 trillion today. Right. And that's more than enough to su support a multi How does that 15 percent uh, compare to the Internet era, for example? Um, it's broadly in line. Uh, you know, when we look back both at the adoption of the electric motors in the early 1900s, uh, the increase in productivity we saw as IT solutions were deployed in the late 90s, early 2000s, you basically saw roughly a one and a half percentage point boost to productivity growth uh, over a 10 year period. Um, so about 15 percent overall. That's roughly what we have in mind today. Do you, how much of that eventual productivity boom do you think we're witnessing now? Uh, very little. Um, you know, if we look at adoption rates in the Census Bureau's data, um, every two weeks I ask companies, are you using AI for regular production? Uh, only 10 percent of companies say they are. And so you haven't seen adoption levels reach uh, points where they really are impacting macro statistics yet. Now, 
Just yesterday, we published a survey from that we fielded to our investment banking team, and among GS investment bankers, they see 37 percent of clients starting to use AI for regular production. And so we are seeing adoption increase, particularly among U.S. corporates, but it's still relatively small, and I think. You know, too too soon and too small to impact macro aggregates. So when does this start creeping into when Jan is, joins us on an employment day or whatever it may be? When does it start creeping into your actual estimates in terms of GDP growth and everything else? We have the first uh, boost to GDP in our forecast in 2027. Mm -hmm. um, it's relatively small and then rising gradually into the 2030s, uh, peaking at around half a point of a, a boost of an uplift to overall GDP um, GDP growth. Uh, Risks around that are skewed to earlier. Um, we are seeing signs of labor market impacts in some of the sectors that are most exposed. Um, you know, in the tech sector in particular, you've seen uh, job growth slow uh, pretty meaningfully over the last uh, year. And if that's an indicator of what's to come, then you know it's possible that you start to see impacts next year.